This is the new Lexus LS, and a bit like me, you want to know, is it as good as the German luxury limousines? It starts from just under £73,000, but if you click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or on the CarWow link under the video, you can see how much you can save on a Lexus LS or any new car for that matter at carwow.co.uk. Now, one of the things I really love about Lexus is that unlike the Germans, they're braver with their design. So this is the original LS. Look at it compared to the new one. It's completely different. If we look at a German car, it'd be very recognisable because they like to evolve their designs very cautiously. Also, the Lexus makes you think that the German car designers have a serotonin deficiency as their creations are just so joyless in comparison. The face of this car is just dominated by the huge spindle grille. I really love the look of it. It's very dramatic. You've got thin headlamps as well. These have the range topping matrix LEDs which can blank out part of the high beam so you don't dazzle other drivers. You can get the car with 20 inch alloy wheels and with its chrome finish they are very very sweet. The car itself is quite low for a big saloon to make it look nice and sleek. Lexus has given this car what it calls a six window design so of course there's the windscreen one, two, three, then here you've got four and five and these actually help with rearward visibility and of course six at the very back. Then round the tail of the car it's all pretty neat you've got bits of chrome and it's kind of going for slightly fake exhaust. They're not as bad as on a Mercedes, but yeah, they're still sort of there, which is a bit disappointing. But what do you think about this car's design? Click up there to vote if you think this looks better than a BMW 7 Series, Mercedes S-Class or Audi A8. Unlike its German rivals, the Lexus will not be offered with diesel power. In fact, in the UK, there will be just one engine, this 40 miles per gallon capable LS 500H. So I've got a 3.5 litre V6 petrol engine mated to an electric motor and as a result I can cruise along on electric power alone so it's perfectly silent. But I've also got a combined 360 horsepower so I'm going to put the car into sports plus mode now and I'm going to launch it to see how fast it is. Now did you hear that? <laughs> Sounded a bit odd, didn't it? A bit whiny when you rev it out and the gear changes are bizarre. And that's because this car has a mixture of a normal gearbox and a CVT. So the normal gearbox has four gears and there's a CVT and combined you get like this 10 step gears. It's, it's all a bit odd. It's designed to stop the kind of whining sound of a CVT and make it feel more natural, but it's still not quite there, I don't think. And that sums up the handling too, because while the LS500H holds onto the road well enough, especially as you can get it with all-wheel drive, unfortunately, even in sports mode with the suspension in its firmest setting, it just never feels as sharp to drive as a BMW 7 Series nor Audi A8. Part of this is down to the added weight of the hybrid system, which also causes another issue. As standard, the LS gets hands-free tailgate opening, and being Japanese, it works every single time. One of the problems with it being hybrid though is the fact that the batteries do take up a bit of space and as a result the boot on this car is smaller than that of a Mercedes S-Class. Still, we did manage to fit all our filming kit in it. So that's okay. What is more than just all right though is how Lexus has incorporated traditional Japanese hospitality known as Omotenashi into the LS. And so here are five ways that the car will pamper you. When you open the car and go to get in, the air suspension automatically raises by 40 millimeters to make the car the ideal hit point for you to just drop down into it. When you turn off the car, the seat belt holder automatically rises up to make it easier for you to undo your belt. And then obviously the steering wheel moves back and down and your seat moves back slightly. Also, when you open the door, I do it on the passenger, the side bolsters of the seat go flat. And then when you sit back in again, they pump up to hold it in place as well as a normal four zone climate control. You can get something called climate concierge. What that does is use infrared sensors throughout the car to measure the body temperatures of all the occupants. And then it can do finer control of the temperatures throughout the car to account for things like uneven heating caused by low level sun. The car stereo speakers can cancel out any unwanted engine noise entering the cabin. Also, all but the entry level car comes with a premium Mark Levinson surround sound system with 23 speakers located at 16 different locations. When passengers in the back want to get out, the rear seat moves into an upright position to make exiting easier. Another Japanese tradition you'll find in the LS is Takumi craftsmanship. 
which is essentially a combination of art and OCD. No matter how hard you try, you will not find a single stitch out of place. They are just bang on. It's, it's really good, the quality. Even the curved stitching here, this lovely contoured door panel. In fact, the, the Alcantara material extends all the way down into the door bin. In terms of the rest of the design, well, I like it. It's got this swoopy thing going on, a bit like a Mercedes S-Class, but it's, it's not so ostentatious. Some people may find it a bit busy with all these lines and stuff, but I quite like it. Also like how the infotainment display is integrated into it as well. So for the driver, you've got a reasonably small display, but it shows all you need it to. And then for the main infotainment, you've got this huge widescreen, it's massive. Now you control it using this computer laptop style touchpad. You scroll along between the different icons and press down to select one. Though I don't find this system quite as easy to use as a swivel wheel that you get with BMW's iDrive. Also the menu structure isn't that intuitive, it can be a bit confusing. One thing that isn't confusing though is a huge heads up display you get with this car. It's absolutely massive and really makes it easy to pick up key information when you're driving along. There's lots of other kit to help boost safety too, including a system which will prevent you from reversing over a child. And then there's the semi-autonomous driving technology to help make cruising on the motorway less arduous. So I have the cruise control on and a radar is measuring the distance of the car in front and keeping me safely dropped back from it. Also, I've got some cameras reading the white lines in the road and it's, it's auto steering to keep me in lane. Now, one of the problems with that is that if the lanes aren't that clear, the white lines start to disappear, the car could weave off the road. But to prevent that happening, this Lexus actually uses the radar to lock onto the car in front and that helps steer it when it's not sure where the white lines are. Now, you can drive along with your hands off the wheel for a certain length of time before the car will get a little bit cross and warn you and then disengage the system. But I don't suggest you ever, ever drive along with your hands off the wheel, particularly in this car, because if it's got that radar lock onto the car in front and the car in front decides that it wants to overtake the car in front of it, this Lexus will just go and follow it. And, well, <laughs> that can be a little bit scary. Really though, as with every other luxury car, you should never fully rely on the systems. If you really want to take a back seat, get someone else to drive. So then, what's it like in the back of this Lexus LS? Well, now's a good time to talk about comfort levels, really. So, in terms of sound insulation, as you can probably tell, it's pretty quiet in here. It's nice and relaxing. As for the suspension, well, as standard, this particular car has air suspension and it does that thing of, you know, wafting you up the road, make you feel like you're floating. However, I don't think it's quite as good at ironing out the bumps as the air suspension you get in a Mercedes S-Class or an Audi A8. It just seems to fidget about a little bit over imperfections. Now, one of the things I love about Lexus is the fact that it doesn't have an extensive options list like the German cars do. So you just have trim levels and the specs are clearly explained. So this is the range topping premier car. It costs 98,000 pounds. You might be thinking that here in the back, it doesn't look all that special, but watch this. So I can fold this down here and then I have a control panel. So I can go into the infotainment system, I can change the source, I can put on a DVD. To be perfectly honest, it'd be easier if I could use it as a touch screen. This car has class leading seating. So this is known as the business position, the normal position. But if I press this button here, it will move the chair in front of me out of the way and it will move my chair back and down and in fact this car has a class leading 48 degrees reclination in this chair back. Then I can go into the individual settings and what I'm going to do now is control the seat ottomans. I mean this is lovely, this is lovely but we can go on better because I can now go into the shiatsu massage function and I'm going to give myself a full body stretch massage because why not and it'll not only do my shoulders, my lower back, It'll also do my thighs. And I've got spot heaters for my upper back and lower back as well. I mean, it's really impressive. And for an in-car massage, this is pretty blooming good. It's really relaxing. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do now? I'm just going to put up my blinds and just chill out a bit because I deserve it. I've worked so hard today. I really like the way it does this. Look, you've got individual little blinds for the quarter lights as well. And all this is standard on this range topping car. So then what's my final verdict on the Lexus LS? Well, do you know, I really like it. I don't think it drives quite as well as the German rivals, but 
it's not that far off. And you know, if you're interested in this car because of the way it looks, and it certainly looks good, then it's definitely worth considering. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. And click on our logo to subscribe. Also click on the video windows for more content.